Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of North Flight Images and in this video I'm going to look at what difference printing large makes to some images. Now I've found over the years in printing with large printers and this particular one is a 24 inch Epson P7500 I'm testing that some images just don't work well when printed at small sizes medium sizes they look better but some images just look better when they're printed big similarly there are images that work fine at small sizes you print them large and they just don't have quite the same impact what's wrong what sort of things make the difference now i'll be coming back to this in other issues but this one particular image that i'm going to be printing is an example of one that really needs to be printed quite large to work. Now, it's easy if you're doing printing, you, know, you might think large print is A3 or A3 plus. Large prints to me are ones that I can hide behind. And this one, this printer is pretty good. We'll do, uh, I've got 24 inch paper loaded in, in this at the moment, but I'm gonna do a print on sheet. I'm gonna show how the printer loads sheets very well, by the way. So what's the image and what differences can I see? Well, I've been testing and I'll have a review of this and some a video specifically about it. A new 90 millimeter F2.8 macro lens goes up to 2X magnification from Lauer. Now I've been testing this on the EOS RP, in fact the one that I use for shooting these videos. And this is it. And I'm taking a photograph of a small bunch of dried flowers. What are these? Well I've got some jade plants out in Arkansas, jade plants, money plants. They often flower during the winter with brilliant little white and pink flowers. These flowers dry and by the summer you ended up with just a little bunch of dried flowers. There is, they're, they're tiny, we are an inch or so across, and there is lots of detail in them, ideal for shooting with a macro lens. So here's the setup. I've got the lens, I'm, I'm using it uh, in my sort of area I use for macro photography. Uh, I'm shooting against a black background, better known as a black t-shirt. Um, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. Uh, the item is actually supported on a clip. We'll Photoshop that out when needed. But I'm using here the camera. Um, you can see on the back of it uh, that the focus peaking makes it very easy to check the focus. Now, I'm not doing a stack shot or anything fancy like that. I've just moved the subject, picked an angle I like, picked area of focus, and I'm taking the photo. Now, photograph I get from this is a 26 megapixel image. I get the raw file and I'm going to open it out uh, and I'm going to edit the file in Photoshop, uh, camera raw, and then put it into Photoshop. Few little considerations of color choice, a uh, color space choice here. When I've opened up the image, there are lots of deep browns in the image. Deep browns are often out of gamut for printing and certainly for showing on screens and capturing in some color spaces. So the example I've got here, I'm using Photoshop's um, gamut warning and I've set it to bright red to show the areas of the image which are out of gamut. Here we are if I was to try and use the image, edit it in the sRGB color space. You can see there are quite large areas of this, and this is just a zoomed in part of the image. You can see there are quite large areas of it that are showing up bright red, which are the bits which are out of gamut. Now, doesn't tell you, unfortunately, um, Photoshop's gamut tool has been due an overhaul for a long while in my mind, but um, it doesn't tell you how much out of gamut, just that there are potential issues. So there we have, uh, that's sRGB. If I go down, if I take that to Adobe 98, there's really not that much change, not that much of an improvement uh, because these colors are out of gamut for screens. If I then take it to Pro Photo, very large color space, larger than I can display on the screen that I'm editing on, and I don't edit on this laptop. This laptop is purely here for convenience for driving this, uh, driving this printer. I'm 
editing on a near Adobe 98 screen, um, an SW321C. I've got a review about it and some stuff that uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice screen, big 4K screen, nice to edit on. Now, how am I going to process this 26 megapixel image? Well, first up, I'm going to sharpen it. I'm intending to make to increase the size of this image, so the 26 megapixel image, I want to make it so I could comfortably print it at a 60 inch by 40 inch print if need be. So vast print. So I'm going to enlarge it in gigapixel AI from Topaz. Now, I've produced a video looking at aspects of that and I've got lots of written articles with much more detail in them about my enlargement process, how I go about it. But suffice to say, the first thing I do before I enlarge a large amount is I sharpen the image. And I use um, Topaz's Sharpen AI for that because it gives me quite fine control over the type of sharpening. I dial it back a little bit from what the uh, uh, software might suggest because I found that a bit of sharpening then re-enlargement with Topaz uh, Gigapixel AI, that then gets you an absolutely vast file. Um, which is what I'm after here. I'm after uh, detail that I can print. Incidentally, when you do the combination of this sharpening, then the enlargement, the resulting print images need very little additional sharpening if you produce them at high resolution. Uh, I'm going to look at sharpening in more detail at future point, but I would say that if you're traditionally used to enlarging things and sharpening things, and you use software like Gigapixel AI, Sharpen AI, it readjusts your thinking on sharpening as to what's actually necessary. But anyway, um, those are details which I'll leave for a written article one day rather than trying to cover here in the video. So I've got that, I've sharpened it, and I've produced that larger image. Now, what to do with the image, how to edit it? Well, it needs a bit of editing to get rid of the, some of the stalk and also the support that's visible in the corner um, of the image. That's easily done. It's against a black background, so I can just fade it to black. Uh, here's an image that I've edited. I've applied a bit of a curve to it and done a few other adjustments. This is pretty basic editing. There is nothing more done to this than a couple of curves, slight adjustments, just to adjust the tonality. Remember, I've already adjusted this when I processed the raw file in Camera Raw. Now, if you want to do stuff like this in Lightroom, well, you get so far and then I'm afraid you're going to need this tool like Affinity Photo or, um, or Photoshop as I use here uh, because you need fine control over it once you start getting into larger images. You know, Lightroom's great for printing your snaps at moderate sizes. It fails abysmally. I've never liked it. So uh, as they say, your mileage may vary. I know it has its fans, but I've never liked it. Probably because I've used Photoshop for years. But anyway, this is purely about the principles rather than the exact process. I mean, this is using, this laptop runs Photoshop CS6. It's an old laptop. I've got the latest Photoshop upstairs. I don't produce tutorials that are step-by-step -step recipes for editing, and I never will, because to make them sufficiently detailed for people to follow them renders them irrelevant for the vast majority of people who might be interested in it. I try and cover the principles, the why you do stuff, not the detail of how to do it. By all means, please do ask questions. If you've got questions about anything about my videos, uh, always happy to answer questions. But remember that my aim is to suggest why you might want to do something and the importance of understanding why you want to do it, where you want to get to, rather than the minutiae of the details of how you get there. Um, but uh, there we go. That's a, so there's the image. After I've tidied it up, I've done a slight adjustment and I have an image ready. Now I've got this one here loaded into Photoshop and I'm going to print it on a sheet of paper, on a sheet of A2. Here's a sheet of paper I'm going to be using, going to be loading up. Um, I've opened up print on Photoshop. I've positioned the paper. You could use the Epson print layout software here and in some other videos I will look at using Epson print layout. It, just that I'm looking at the actual printing here, not the process of doing it. So Epson print layout works fine. 
so does printing from Photoshop. And in this instance, um, from anything you like, I could do this work in Affinity Photo, for example. So here's the image. It's a huge image, which means it's printing at very high resolution. So what I'm going to do is just press print. Now, because it's a huge image, it will take a moment or two to work through things. And uh, it's going to want a sheet of paper loading. Now, there's a little flap that opens here, and I load the sheet into the top. The printer will uh, decide when it wants some paper. Now, I'm just going to drop the sheet here. Now, because of this is a big sheet, I'm going to hold it here for this. Uh, catch on this bit of paper here. I don't want it flopping over the back because it isn't drawn in. It needs to drop into place and it needs to drop in squarely. I've lined it up with the mark here and it should just load normally. Tells me cut sheet is not loaded. Reminds me that I need A2 premium luster, which I've got. Put that there. Premium Luster, it's already populated the names here and everything from the printer driver, has told the printer what it wants, so it's telling me what it wants. So the Premium Luster sheet, A2, OK, and away it goes. I can let it go. It's drawn in here, I can see the paper has come through the leading edge, and it should just print. Now, with big printers like this, you get large margins at the trailing end. If you want to print boardless at this size, either print off roll paper and it trim it, or print on a different printer. This printer does not take the same kinds of paper settings and things as you would get with your smaller desktop printers. Printer started. See it through here. Tells me I've got eight minutes left. Print's going well, just see the paper just going in here, and I can see the print coming through. We're only just starting to print some of the image, so it's going to be a, a few minutes yet. And in fact, it tells me still reckon seven minutes left. Now, I've swapped to my print viewing glasses because uh, my close-up eyesight's not great. Uh, so uh, th these ones allow me to view things up to about that distance as opposed to normal life when I need to hold things well away. Could be one of the reasons I like large prints, but um, I'll, that, it is actually your eyesight is connected with some of the reasons that some prints look better large, some prints work okay at small sizes. But uh, hopefully this example will give you something to think about, about making prints. I appreciate not that many people necessarily get a chance to play around with printers this size and practice making large prints. But you might have an image that you think, this looks good, this is going to work. What I would say is if you want to make large prints, I've, I've produced a video on what the differences are, you know, some aspects of making large prints. I believe it's called So You Want a Large Printer or something like that. It looks, I put a link to it in the notes for the video. But it is something I have looked at on occasions, and it is a distinct effect I've noticed. Now, I've had large format printers here for getting on for 20 years, and I've been making large prints on occasions, sometimes very large. And you can't deny the impact of a large print. Um, but I found that some images that you think that's gonna look great, when you look at them large, they don't work quite so well. Are there any common factors? Let's say, well, I looked at some aspects of it in the other video and the articles, but this one struck me when I was wanting to print an image of this particular bit of, dry, of dried flowers, purely initially from testing the new Lauer macro lens, which I'll, I'll have reports on in due course. But I can say it's very nice. It is pin sharp and the distortions are minimal on it. Certainly at one to one ratio, two to one ratio, it puts my old MPE 65 Canon's classic one to five X macro lens, puts it to shame at that, uh, those levels of magnification. Um, shows the age of the old Canon lens. But Canon have not produced any specialist macro lenses for RF mount yet. And I mean sort of specialist professional macro lenses, not ones that just get macro added to the end of the name. That some of the newest tilt shift lenses 
have macro in the name, but they're not specialist macro lenses. I should mention that I'm printing this at the maximum quality setting and with the black enhance optimizer on it. It improves the print density very slightly and because of the solid black background and I'm wanting some deep crisp colors in that, I've pushed for this the maximum setting because when I was doing profiling I found that the maximum with black enhance optimizer actually made a slight difference to some aspects of print quality particularly for images like this uh, I would say the black optimizer if you have a p700 p900 I wouldn't rush to use it quite so much I think it makes far less of a difference on the 700 900 but here on the p7500 it definitely seems to make a slight difference um, how many people would notice that though? Well, I'm, I'm not as sure in here. If I could have printed this probably at the normal, you know, standard high quality setting, it would have printed at twice the speed. Would it have made much of a difference? I think not. I've looked at prints. I think I can see occasional differences, but that's because I know they're there. So I'm always very suspect of differences that I can see when I know what I'm looking for. Um, it always just makes gives me just that little warning note that sometimes it's not worth worrying about things that people won't see. Well, there's our print down into the print catcher. And there's the print. Now, looks very nice. It's actually a very pretty print. What about what I was saying about print size. Well, here is one I made earlier. This is printed on A4. Now, I'm very aware of the difficulties of showing these effects on a video, particularly anyone who's foolish enough to watch my videos on a mobile phone. Um, now, given my eyesight problems, the, the prospect of watching a video at that size um, is a pretty much a non-starter, glasses or not. Um, I would say this one needs to be seen on a big screen, but um, yeah, that's YouTube for you. But anyway, there is small A4 print. There is an A2 print. Now, unfortunately, because I used the black optimizer and forgot to allow for this, it has added the extra big margin on one side, so we've got the print somewhat offset on the sheet of paper. Uh, that's purely my fault for selecting black optimizer and forgetting that it changes the print layout subtly. So there's the print there. I can see, uh, once again, this is with my strong glasses on, I can see lots of nice detail in the picture. The picture doesn't look as crowded. I'm looking at that picture from this distance. It looks okay. If I look at the A4 print, well, I can do it. To see it at the same perspective as this, I need to look at it about this distance, about the minimum I can sharply focus for this. And yes, I can see detail in it, and it's an interesting picture. I shall include this picture, by the way, in the written review of the lower lens. So if you want it, you can click on it and see it on as big a screen as you've got to try and get a, a bit of a feel for this. But I can't really include this in the videos. So there we go. We've got that. This just looks so much clearer. But even holding this close, this one still looks clearer. One of the differences between large prints and small prints is that we tend to look at larger prints further away. Now, our binocular vision attributes that depth to the size, perceived size of the object. So the perceived size of the object that you're looking at varies depending on how close you're looking at it. So I'm looking at that like that. Even if I look at this like this, it just doesn't seem the same. That's because my brain knows this is something that is just a few inches in front of my nose. So there we go, we've got two different sizes. What about even bigger? Well, here is another one I made earlier. This one is printed borderless on 24 inch paper and is much bigger. 
Now this is printed on a heavy art paper, uh, one that I've looked at in another video, and this is a large print. Now I'm hoping that's going to be quite readily visible. If I compare this print with the A4 print, or even underneath here, the what many people would consider large A2 print, the difference in scale is quite clear. This large print has the same detail that I can see in this print here. In fact, if I look closely enough, I'll get magnifying glass out, the detail is here in this one as well. But that one just looks so much more impressive. Um, it's no, there are no hard and fast rules as to what looks better. But if you print, if you just take say a landscape print, and there's lots of fine detail in it. Now that fine detail is going to be lost in a print that size. Even for people who look at it quite close, they won't perceive it as fine detail in a landscape. Take your print up to a two size and it definitely looks more impressive. Take the print up to, and I'll say this is 24 inch by 36 inch, printed borderless. Take your print up to this size and it makes a real difference. Now, hopefully there won't be too many reflections on that so you can get a bit of a, an idea of it. Um, now, I'm gonna do some more things on this, but I just, in taking this picture, I was quite struck by how it immediately said, print me big, uh, particularly having this printer here with me. Uh, so there you go. If you've got any questions, please do ask. I'll put links in with the, uh, in the video, in the notes in the video. Please do subscribe uh, to the channel if you find it interesting. I'm going to have lots more stuff on different subjects as well as printing. And uh, thanks for watching.